All right, guys, back for an edition of When Digital Dentistry Fails, How Will You Respond? Featuring the Shining Scanner, the Three Shape Scanner, and the IO Connect Scan Bodies. I want you guys to keep in mind something very, very interesting. At the end of the day, I always say this all the time, maybe a little bit harsh, but digital, digital dentistry is shit. We're just trying to make it less shitty. And that's really what it is. Anybody who tells you everything is great and everything works perfect, it's just not true. You have to be ready when things go sideways, how to navigate and how to get through it. So here we go, let's do this case. So here's my patient. I did her uppercase uh, quite a few years ago. Um, she had a loss of vertical. Um, she had a loss of vertical. She had some broken down teeth with pulp exposure, severe um, sensitivity. Um, I needed to restore her vertical dimension, um, create a restoration that's long lasting. She didn't want to have anything to do with saving her teeth. And we decided to do a quick uh, lower hybrid case to match her upper dentition. So here we go. This is done with no sedation. We gave her bilateral nerve blocks. And uh, while we're waiting for that, we use the shining scanner to scan the upper. This is with the new uh, update. And uh, that was way better than the time I did it last time. It didn't get any double scans and it scanned pretty quickly. Uh, here is my pro pre-op just giving her a little bit more anesthesia to give her some make her feel a bit better I took out the teeth right before that i mark where my posterior restoration uh, implant is going to be and i go ahead and i do everything in quadrants take the teeth out place the implants i do half at a time um, create enough vertical space for my implants graft the, the sockets place the multi-unit abutment, suture it closed, place my THSs in this case. Because we were using shining, we only used one cuff height, which is the two millimeter cuff height in this one. And we go to the left side, take out the molar, take out the remaining teeth, um, and place the implants. These are Megagen Blue Diamond implants. Uh, great stability. I love the sizes that are available. We suture everything, start putting the THSs back on. Uh, which is a temporary abutment, healing abutment, and a scanning abutment. Um, we cauterize the rest over tissue, and now we start to scan the lower arch. We turn on the shining, and you can see, boom, straight off the bat, it starts to struggle, and it just does not want to move. I have to delete the restoration, I mean the impression, and we start again, and you can see straight off the bat, it's getting confused, and you can see on the left-hand side that the picture is perfectly clear. There's no blood. There's none of that. That's the beauty of the THS, but it gets extremely confused again, and boom. Finally, I'm able to get through, um, but then you see on the left-hand side, it gets a little bit confused. Again, I try to restitch that, uh, but you'll see that we start to get a double scan on one side. I said, ah, forget it, we're gonna completely abandon it, even though there's not that much blood, but for some reason it looks like the red really confuses it. So I deleted the scan, and this time I went ahead and I powdered the arch, which is part of my flow, and boom, you can see it's really fast in terms of how it picks it up. One of the things that's a little bit difficult with the Shining is that it's not one-to-one -one when you hold the scanner in the mouth and coordinate A. It won't show coordinate A on the screen. It's sort of like almost like delayed a little bit. So you have to like learn how to scan around it. But the soft tissue scan was way better than it was in the first before the first update. So I'm glad that they were able to fix that. Um, then we go ahead and we start to uh, put our bite device in. Um, we create our bite device to make sure that we have what to do. While that's being trimmed down, uh, we go ahead and we put the different scan flags in or the dominoes with different sizes in the perfect sense. Um, we go ahead and boom, it picks it up really fast and really easy. Um, so that's really not an issue. I really love that feature of that. Um, but then we hit a snag, you'll see in a second. that the software said to me that I created 
the order with only two implants, go back and change it. I said, great, no problem. I went back and I changed the, the implants from two to six because I guess it didn't save correctly. And boom, my data got just deleted, which is very frustrating. So it's not the end of the world. We go back and we scan and they pop back up. This is like, you know, 15 seconds to 45 seconds scan to just pick up everything that's needed. Everything looks great. We hit and then we go to the stitching. And now I place my scanner. You could see the scan, the screen. Nothing is being picked up. How frustrating is this? Go back, start again. Nothing is being picked up. Super frustrating. Again, go back. Nothing is being picked up. Super frustrating. And I'm not sure why this is going on. So I said to myself, okay, well, I need to figure this out. Let me shut off uh, the AI scan, which should automatically be shut off in this step. And boom, it turned on. We did one side, it stitched right away. And then we moved to the other side. You could see it stitched a little bit wrong, but that as we continue to scan, it fixed itself. And that was all great. So I'm super excited. We're on our way through. And now you could see the blue bar of death. This stayed at 91% for a good 10 to 12 minutes and I could not get out of it. There is no way to bypass it, no way to get through to it. And this was very, very, very frustrating. Um, well, I have a case I need to do. So when di digital dentistry fails, what do you do? You go to your next option. So I went back to my trusty way again, as I'm doing this, taking out all the scan, it's still stuck at 91%. Even though I have the scan, I said, forget it. Take out my trios, scan my upper all over again. You can see how fast and beautiful it scans with no issue whatsoever. Then we go ahead and we do the lower, powdered obviously, and you can see how fast it picks it up. Because of all the pressure from the THS caps, they're all two millimeters. There's essentially no blood. Then we go to the IO Connect scan bodies. Really simple. There was only one large, couple mediums, a bunch of smalls. Go in the bites module, boom, pick it up in less than seven seconds and it is done easy we don't even stitch it we take those out put in our bite device on the ths's loot it in have the patient bite down make sure they don't move well before we do that we have to scan the bite device make sure we leave ths caps exposed Super fast, super easy. And then we take the bite. And we go to ExoCAD and Meta Design to export everything. And we start to align it all. I go into IO Connect. Make sure that it's an STL, not a PLY, because it won't read the uh, PLY. Select all the positions of the IO Connects. Tell it what size cuff height, tell it what size um, scan flag. I hope one day it will be automatic that it can just figure that out on its own. And then everything crashed <laughs> to start again. <laughs> and still I mark everything all over again, still crashing. And I was wondering why is it that it's like that? And if you look closely, you can see that there's a little portion of his tongue, of her tongue that's stuck under the IO Connect. So while I'm trying to figure this out, I'm aligning all of the different scans, the pre-op, wax up, and that's still processing, the THS scan body, um, setting up the bite exactly the way it's supposed to. And then I go back to the, to the IO Connect to reprocess it. But again, I get this circle of death and then my computer shut off. And I figured that the reason that it's not working is because the, the system is getting confused. So I needed to delete that extra data and I saved it, brought it back into IO Connect, marked it all over again, two millimeters and legit within seven seconds, it was done. 
So then I export everything out, realign it with my soft tissue scan, and take a quick look how it aligns beautifully. And you could see that the scan is perfect. We go into ExoCAD and we design everything. Import all the different files that are needed. Set the insertion axis. Set all the position of the implants, all two millimeters, multi-unit for photogrammetry. We're gonna set the angles of the screw channels so that we have no buckle end. Screw channels with Powerball screw, you can go up to 30 degrees, which is the beauty of this screw. Everything is set perfectly. We adjust the occlusion. Now we just set the basal portion and we go ahead and smooth everything. Quite simple. Thin out the lingual so the patient has room for their tongue. <clears throat> and then we process this. It's gonna create the final wax up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out those back molars. And now it's time to smooth out everything. And then we're gonna go ahead and print this and you'll see when I print it, I print two copies in two different printers because the last thing I wanna do is have a failed print and then have to lose another 30 minutes. So we print it twice on two different printers because digital dentistry is shit. We're just trying to make it less shitty. And that's the beauty of this. I printed on two printers. One was on the Form Labs and one was on the Einstein. And we start them both. They it's average about 22 to 25 minutes. And now I start to compare. I was able to get the shining data out after I restarted my computer. Thank God it was still there. And you can see what looks really great um, that didn't look the way that it was last time was you can see that actually the soft tissue scan where the THSR is, is actually very, very sharp. Um, in the original video, you can see one of my complaints was that the soft tissue scan was not sharp at all. But what's interesting is that in their viewer, the scan looks totally horrendous. But when you export the STL or the PLY, it looks really, really sharp, almost uh, sharper than uh, the Trios. Um, so then what I did was I aligned everything together, which means the Trio scan, the Shining scan, the Shining photogrammetry scan, and the IO Connect scan. And you can see that basically everything is almost perfectly aligned, clinically acceptably aligned. Um, so I could have used any of the three scans. That that you can see that doesn't meet, that's, that's not a real scan. Um, it's just some sort of overlay that they do, but if you look closely, basically all three scans, the Shining scan, the IO Connect scan, and the three shape straight trio scan all align perfectly, which is very, very interesting because all of the data was great. And that's a telltale sign to what everything will look like. And you could see by all those greens and the shining is the, the purple. And then you could see how everything is perfectly aligned. And then I look nice and clear and you could see how perfect it actually is within 10 microns of each other. Anyhow, we finished printing it. We add a little bit of pink, because I love this patient. She's a sweetheart. She's been my patient for a while. And we go ahead and deliver the restoration. Powerball screw, 10, 15, then 20 noon centimeters of torque, and boom, the bite is perfect. No adjustment whatsoever. You can see on the x-ray how everything is fully seated. Now you can tell that straight from the way that the Powerball screw is fully engaged in the MUA. And that's the beauty of digital dentistry. When something goes wrong, you're able to fix it and go from there. At the end of the day, uh, Shining did a great job of fixing their soft tissue scan. I will, if they force me to stay within their workflow of going from side to side, um, they must know when to shut off the AI scanner. I would love for my scanning to be really one-to-one -one in the same coordinates and really follow where it's supposed to be. Um, and Man, fix the, the processing. We used to have this problem with processing with Medit five, six years ago. It's got to process way faster. We don't have time for this uh, or else computers just crash left and right. It needs to be fluid and easy. Again, the data is there. It's accurate. 
um, just work on the way that the software is being processed on my scan data so that it doesn't scan, it doesn't crash, and I don't have to go to another system. IO Connect did spectacularly. I'm really falling in love with this system, not only just for the price, but the ease of use and being me being able to use my three shape scanner. So again, when you buy things, buyer beware. And the only thing you need to be aware of is be knowledgeable into why things don't work. And when they don't work, what do you do to be able to make it work? Have a great day and keep on scanning. And remember, just try and make digital dentistry better. Thanks. This is Dr. Jonathan Abenheim signing off until our next review.